like to draw my triangles this, just my general triangle, the first angle that I draw. Just in case there's only one angle, uh, I like to put it at the bottom left, just for consistency. Five degrees. Um, so that's angle A. So side A will be across from it. That'll be 11. And this will be 14. So I'll put my split the rest of them. And so this will be B. So just to review real quick, when we have a, what kind of triangle is this? Side, 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 angle, side, angle, which side, side, angle. Side, side, angle, right? So when you're like naming it, uh, basically don't skip over two things that you don't know, and that way you'll, you'll be in the right order. So if I have to skip over here to get from the side to this angle, I have to skip over an angle and an unknown side, that's out of order. Side, just skip an angle, that's okay. Just skip one thing, side, side, and then an angle. If you do an angle, side, side, but we don't usually like that. Here we go, side, side, angle. Um, and just to review, we may wind up with no triangles, one triangle, or two triangles, right? So, the way that I, I advised, because a handy way to tell that you have no triangles is That works if this angle that they give you is obtuse, yeah. all right? But it's acute. So this 11 might be long enough, and it might be too short. Right? And there's like these little formulas that we could use. We could take 14 times the sine of 35 and see if our side is long enough, and that would work just fine. But instead of that, my advice is Try it, and if you get uh, an error on your calculator, then you know that it's not possible. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, keeping in mind that when we do the law of sines, we're working with angles and their opposite sides. You know, like coming in pairs when we use the law of sines. So, what are we going to solve for? What is the unknown we're about to try to find? Uh, B. B. Angle B. Guess I'd be. So we've got this pair of, of two known things, and we're going to solve for this this thing that's across from this side. So start with like start with the thing that I don't know, making sure that it's in the new right there. Sine of b over 14 equals the sine of this other angle, 35 over 11. Are we going to get something? Are we going to get some answer? Are we going to get an error here? So it's at this moment that we know what is <laughs> See, you're doing yourself. I love you. That's <laughs> <laughs> funny. No. <laughs> Joyful. Okay. Joyful. I'll choose to believe you. Okay. So at this moment, we know 
that well, there's no error, which means that there is or there isn't a triangle. Which one is it? It is. There it is. And it, it's now that we know that there is at least one triangle that we can tell if there's a second. Just finding the first angle, meeting that. that what we found out is that this side is essentially long enough to reach from this, this vertex to somewhere down here. I haven't probably drawn this to scale really well, but whether it's over here or maybe it's, it's more steep like that, uh, it definitely can make a triangle. So the question is, will we be finding a second triangle or not? Yes. How do we know we will? So it's short, it's long enough to make a triangle, it's also short enough to fit in here, fit right in there. We won't find the second one right now, we'll, we'll find all the pieces of the first one and then we'll find the second one. Right, so we can find this one pretty easily. You just 35 plus 46.8. Yeah. 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 And what do we get? Now you could get slightly different answers if you do things like um, we use the sine of 98.11. Like we only got 98.11 because we rounded to the hundreds place. If you use 98.11, whatever the decimal place is come after that, it's going to cause you to get a slightly different answer. So uh, let's say at least round to two decimal places. If you're rounding everything to two decimal places, uh, Right, so we decided that there's a second triangle possible. First, we, we know that there's a, a triangle possible because there's no error yet. We know that there's a second triangle because this side is shorter than this side, meaning that it's, it's short enough to fit over here. So first, let's uh, we'll use green to recreate this triangle. This definitely has to be 35. Okay. 35 degrees for angle A. That still has to be 35. That was given. Uh, this is 14. This is 11. We're we'll drawing the, the first triangle. Make it a little bit bigger so we can. Here's our first triangle, and now I'm going to use it to show you the second triangle. Actually, it would be a little bit easier to realize it, but it's also obviously bigger. Okay. So, let's call that one 11. Okay. But we won't label anything else because we're about to draw another triangle. This other triangle we get when we take this side. short enough to fit in this, this other space. And so now we're ready to find this other triangle. And to review how we do this, in this other 
triangle, this one right here, we found this angle was how big? 46.89. 46.89. have a little isosceles triangle here, side 11, side 11, meaning that this angle is also 46.89. How do we find this angle? 133.11. Right. Now that we know that angle, we find this angle very much the same way as we found this one. We add these two up, this one and this one, subtract it from 180. And what do we get? 180 minus this angle, because it's also this angle, angle is 32.11. We made sure this, all three of these angles add to 180. We know this is 11. So very similar to, similar to the last step here, we find C that way. So C over the sine, not the sine of 98.11, still 11 over the sine of 35, because those two things are still the same. C equals 11 times the sine of 11.39 and the sine of 35. What does that give us? Up a lot. You could remember, you know, memorize that you will take this angle of 180 minus that. But if you draw a picture, all this stuff becomes fairly clear. So I know that if I move, I, I create that second tri triangle by swinging this over here, then these two angles must be the same, and this must always be 180 minus that angle, that first angle that you find. And it all falls into place. Thank you. 
We got our notes out. We're ready to learn things and remember them. So I'm gonna, you can, uh, just like with the law of sines, that you can set up several different equations, the sine of A over A equals the sine of C over C, or the sine of B over B equals the sine of A over A, whatever. This is similar with the law of cosines. So I'm gonna write down the equation that I want you to use to help you solve for the thing that you're gonna solve for, and then we'll discuss it a little more detail. So I'm just gonna walk you through a, a, a support example. So what we're gonna be able to do is solve See the, the work that I did there, just the whole line before that last answer. I took 11 squared plus 14 squared and minus that whole thing 2 times 11 times 14 times 4 times 34. That's the 2 plus 6. So, how are we going to find B? Uh, square root. Take the square root. So, we're going to take the square root of the answer. Sometimes we have this quirky thing where we can wind up with two triangles. Okay? 
Okay, that's not going to happen with a lot of foresight. Okay, but what you could do is go about your your merry way and and find all of the stuff and then realize well you might not even ever realize you've done something wrong. Okay, because all the numbers are going to work out. It's going to seem to be fine. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the long way to do this, and we'll see what happens, and we'll know how to avoid it. Okay, so I'm going to say now we have an angle of 34 and a side 7.85, right? So now we could use the long side, which is a whole lot simpler than long cosines, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot fewer numbers and everything. Okay. So here's how I'm going to set you up to fail. Okay. <laughs> See, he set you up to fail. Um, I'm going to have you solve for angle C. Because we have our choice, right? Could we solve for C or A? No. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We got we got an angle on its opposite side. We have this side or this side, so we can solve for A or C. Okay. So to set you up to fail, I'm going to have you solve for C, and then we'll talk about. It. Now, the thing I want you, want you to see this, and I want you to fail, so that you can remember. I want to be careful. I want you to be careful. I want you to fail. Okay. I want you to drown. That's just what you did wrong. <laughs> What's your drown over dead? No, just a little. Just a little. Just oh, start no. to drown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, just wait a second. I got that. Let's see. Okay, 60.22. Um, let's see. side is the biggest, or this angle is the biggest. It's yeah. across from the biggest side. Okay. And this, uh, this, let's see, this angle is next biggest, and it's just the next biggest side across from it. And here's the smallest angle, the smallest side, and that's how it should be. Okay. Sometimes it'll work out to find uh, this angle is the biggest, but it's not across from the biggest side, and so it's looking it's strange. Okay. So let's do this. Let's Just had 7.8 solved for, and we'll solve for A instead of C. Okay, let's see what happens. We'll solve for A instead of C. All right, so if we solve for A first, we'll find that we get a different result. So um, the sine of A over 11 equals the sine of 34 degrees over 7.85. So A comes out to be what? 51.59 uh, degrees. Different than what we found before, right? We found 60.22. Okay, why did that happen? I'll show you in short order. What does that make this angle? Blowing the lid off this cake right now. Two's angle, and that's what happened. We use the law of sines to solve for an angle that turns out to be obtuse. Remember that when we, like at the, the last step here to find A, we 
Can anybody tell me what we did just before this? We found uh, here. Let's move this way. To solve for a, we took the inverse sine of what? So when you take the inverse sign, remember how when we take the inverse sign of something, the result that it gives us is always from over here. Remember that discussion? From negative 90 to 90, it'll never give us an obtuse angle. When we take the inverse sign, we'll never get an obtuse angle. And that's the problem. So what's the solution to this problem? How do, how do we make sure that we don't make this kind of an error? signs to solve for this angle. Uh, it is an acute angle. This one turned out to be obtuse. Okay, this one should have been obtuse. Okay. So how can we make sure that we don't make that same mistake? Remember our mistake was back here, using the law of signs to solve for this angle, which turns out to need to be obtuse. How about we just don't use Law of signs to solve for what? Possibly obtuse obtuse angles. Just avoid that. If there's an angle that could possibly be obtuse, then don't use the law of signs to solve for it. Which angle is the only angle that could possibly be obtuse? In general, across from the, the hypothesis along the side. Okay. So just do that. Always avoid using the law of signs to solve for an angle that could be up to. If you can remember that, you'll be in good shape. Because when you take the inverse cosine, uh, if you use the inverse cosine, the inverse cosine comes from a range of 0 to 10, or 0 to, 10, zero to uh, 180, yeah, 180, which allows for every possible angle that might be in it. So that, that would be it. If anyone uses a lot of cosines, which sometimes you have to, uh, and then use a lot of sines after that, which is a lot simpler, just don't try and solve for an angle that might be obtuse. It's not definitely going to be obtuse. If you solve the angle that's across my hypotenuse, it might be acute. You could have three acute angles in a, in a triangle, but just avoid using a lot of sines to solve for it. It could be obtuse. So that's one kind of triangle we can solve for. What kind of triangle was this? Um. Like an uh, angle, side angle, or uh, side to side. Angle, side, 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 angle, side. See, if we go from this side, we have to skip one, two, three things that we don't know. Let's get back around here. Let's try to group them as tightly as possible and read them in order side, angle, side. So we can solve a side, angle, side with the law of cosines. Do you always have to go to the right or to the left? You mean when, when like, like naming these? Yeah. No. We can go the other way, side, angle, side, that way. Yeah. Okay. But like with like angle side side or something. Side side angle. Side side angle will be the same as angle side side. We just don't normally write angle side side. For a reason. I think it's alphabetical if you angle side side. But That's true you though. Realize so it's spells. Chance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, very blunt truth. I have your secret. Alright. No. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, solve another kind of triangle. That was a side angle side. Just avoid, in general, that will always say you don't solve for an obtuse angle or one that can be obtuse with the law of sines. Um, let's see. We can do a side, side, side. So it's a side, side, side. And uh, well, let's let's look at that equation.
had before. Um, well, first of all, let, let's plan to do this. We know we're going to solve for an angle, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we know we don't want to use the law of sines at any time to solve for an obtuse angle. Right. Right. Uh, the law of cosines will allow us to solve for any of the angles that we want right now. So which angles should we solve for so that we don't wind up using the law of sines to solve for an obtuse angle? Angle B. Angle B, because it is across from the hypotenuse. So let's do that. Let's use that one. So, um, we're going to, yeah, let's, let's see. We'll use that same equation, b squared <coughs> equals a squared plus c squared minus 2 times a times c times this is the cosine of b, except for b will be the unknown and we'll have to get it by itself. Um, if you, if you, Pay attention here, the way that the law of cosines equation is set up is you have this side, and what do you notice about this angle? It's opposite side. So this, this side that you can solve for is across from the angle, and the other sides are all in here. So we could do a squared equals, okay, the other two sides would be b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of C equals a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of c. c. Oh, that should be squared. C. So I'll leave it set up in the same way. We just change the names. But I'm just going to go ahead and uh, those and solve. We go to get b by itself. We can uh, on on this side we can subtract 12 squared and 20 squared minus 12 squared minus 20 squared on both sides. Uh, then we'll have this by itself, and we'll divide both sides by this number, which is a negative 2 times 12 times 20, and we'll take the inverse cosine of all of that. Not if you took the inverse cosine. No, I didn't take the inverse cosine. Oh, I took the inverse cosine. Oh, okay. But you, you're not going to be able to take the inverse cosine of 600 something. Yeah, 665. I probably. So I think the end is negative. 25 divided by negative.
So 112.67. So by solving for the angle that is the only possible angle to be obtuse, we have not run into any problems. Okay, we're not going to use the law of sines to solve for an obtuse angle. And I guarantee that. Okay. So now that we have that angle, we can use the law of sines to solve for either one of these, and we can put both of them uh, in that or either one that we want to solve for. So either A or C. Okay. So it's C, the sign of C, uh, over 20. The sign of 112.67. 27. C equals the inverse sign of all that. solve for the obtuse angle first, right? That's okay. That, like, I don't have to redo all my work. What do I just need to do next? To process the obtuse angle, I guess. I don't know. Or find, find the other angle and then... Which other angle? The angle that is C. The one that couldn't be obtuse. Yeah. Okay, use the law of sines, the simple equation, solve for the angle that's not possibly going to be obtuse. Okay. Which would be... My advice, which I do not follow my own advice, we solve for angle, well, in my diagram, angle B first, this guy right here. Uh, but I did not solve for A, so I just made sure when I use the law of science to solve for something that's not possibly obtuse, something that is definitely going to be acute. That was 29.72 degrees. And then just subtracted both those from 180. 